Good. So I'm talking about the... Uh, so Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for joining me with uh, this presentation I would like to give you today. I'm talking about recent projects, GFOP advantages in bridge, in the bridge industry. I would like to talk about about our company a little bit. Then, um, of course, I go a little bit more deep into the topic specification. Um, then I would like to talk a little bit about failure modes, then some uh, full FOP structures, uh, mainly bridges, of course. And uh, then I would like to talk a little bit about, about bridge decks. And um, last but not least, um, yeah, I am answering all of the questions which you might have. So let's start right from the beginning. So I'm talking to my computer now, which is uh, very unusual. <laughs> so let's start. Uh, at the background of the first slide, you, uh, you can see our factory, our facility. It's the biggest steel factory, protrusion factory in Europe. All the facade systems is made from composites. Um, it's our facade system. Also the window frames, everything is made from composite. Uh, but actually, in 2007, we won the, uh, the steel prize in 2007, so in Denmark. Yes. <laughs> oh, so go to the next page. No, it was too fast. Um, hopefully, my internet connection, but normally it's so good. So, uh, I can't go to the next page, Emmanuel. Uh, It shows second page. Yes, here we go. It's, maybe I have to click now. Oh, yes. No, it's too slowly. Here we go. So we have uh, three main focused areas within our factory. Um, the first one is wind turbine components. Uh, you can see on the right hand side below the red uh, uh, structure, which is the heli hoist, we call it. Um, it's mainly um, for, um, uh, for offshore application where you need a lightweight structure, but it needs to be also maintenance free. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, we also protrude uh, carbon strips. You can see that um, the picture left hand side, the lower one, which are into those uh, wind blades and longitudinal direction. Uh, we are monitoring them only for the wind energy sector. And uh, fiber line comes from the comes from the from the spears, which you can see in ah I have the red dot here, I think. Yeah, the red spears. This part needs to be very, very stiff. So it says from that uh, tooling here to the wind blades, um, these are scratchy profiles cut to spears and which has a fiber content more than 90%. So this is all we what, what we can get out of the machine profiles content wise. Oh, uh, go now to the next page, but it's so slowly. It's so slowly. My computer at the moment synchronizes with fiber line, but I can't stop it. It's unbelievable. So we are also in the window with the set sector, which you can see now at slide four, uh, where we put fruit, we manufacture for set and window frames. Uh, this picture is the Towers and Pier in London, which is actually the longest pier in the world. Um, so it's very harsh environment because it's a seaside, and uh, so this convinced uh, the architect to use FRP reinforcement in this case. So go to the next page. So I can't see the next page, so we need to wait a while. It's crazy, I can't see you. Guys, <laughs> oh my God. Stop, stop it.
Do you see now the the next web page? Um, yeah. Um, within our structural department, uh, we are pull, we are manufacturing rebars instead of using uh, steel rebars. You can use uh, uh, rebars made from composites. You have a lot of, of advantages because you have no corrosion. The fiber content is uh, more than 90%, which you read, uh, where you reach a longitudinal uh, strength of uh, 1,200 newton per square millimeter, which is uh, more than double. Oh, it flips. Too. I need to go back. Mm. So you can have uh, slinner structures. Uh oh. Slimmer structures because the concrete cover uh, don't need to be so much because it's a uh, yeah it's a uh, glass fiber glass fiber uh, polymer. So I try now. I mean the pro uh, the presentation doesn't work, Emmanuel. I need your help. This is the next. No, I had one before. No, that's right. Okay, this is the next page, yes. You can see our manufacturing lines next to each other here, where we protrude all the FRP profiles. These are protrusion lines. I will talk a little bit more about later. On this part, we have all our stock items. All our structural profiles and planks are 6 and 12 meters. Behind that, Stock. We have a uh, machinery department where we cut profiles, we can drill profiles, and we have also a paint facility. On the next page, yes. These profiles are made from composite, from blast fiber. Uh, you can see the rowings, which gives the strength in longitudinal direction, and we have glass fiber mats inside, which gives the strength in transverse direction. All our structural profiles, they have the round, the surface, they have a surface veil, which makes the profile UV resistant. This surface veil is a polyester veil, which, which pushes the fibers microns back that means if the first layer corrodes through UV light or abrasion, through weathering conditions, the main carrying fibers will not be effective. So that is very important to know. But we always recommend to paint our profiles, especially in the bridge industry, but only to make, to make them aesthetically nice look. All our rovings um, are it's a combination of unidirectional uh, 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 rowing spoon and mock rowings. And then our mats, there are continuous mats, woven mats, multiplex mats, and so on. So the engineering is inside such a profile. Uh, it is an elastic elastic material. It's not an uh, yeah, a plastic elastic material. Which means it goes always back to its original um, position. We are using an isophthalic polyester. You have all uh, you have uh, many other polyesters as well, but we are using isophthalic for all our structural profiles and bridge decks. And we're using a fire additive inside such a profile, which I would like to show you a little bit later on the fire movie, which we don't have, unfortunately. I have now clicked on the next page. Maybe I have to do it a little bit earlier. Yeah, here we go. Um, this protrusion process has a lot of advantages. 
Um, it, tells, it is a continuous production. It, we have high efficiency, consistency, and we have a very nice, smooth quality surface. Um, the disadvantage is that we are geometrical, uh, geometric uh, restricted, so we cannot put fruit profiles which are four meters in height and two meters in width. So that is not possible, be possible because uh, the pullers need to have a lot of forces, but I explain you also a little bit later on the process itself. Um, the continuous production is also very important because the engineers need to get the right material always, uh, the correct material at the end of the day. I go now to the next one. Uh, I would like to uh, restart my computer, really, <laughs> because it's so slowly. So here we go. Protrusion line. On one hand, you have the reinforcement, the rovings, and the mud. Uh, with this die, you put every single fiber and mud into the into position, and heating a little bit up the fibers on 60 degrees. You have the pulling device here. Therefore, it's called protrusion. We are pulling the profile out of this device, heating and curing the wines. Uh, the resin will be injected with the pressure. We are working specially with a special tooling, which is closed. And this is at the same time an I profile, U profile. So we are pulling it out, and the finished profile comes out here. So because of this device, all of the profiles come out with the same mechanical properties and put them on stock. Put it in this way. <laughs> I never did it before, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's very unusual to talk to uh, to the screen. So then, now we have this uh, nice protrusion movie, which I can't show you. So I click on the next page. Maybe uh, your professor can show you later. So, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, specification. All our structure profiles comply to EN 13706. So, this is a Euro code. Uh, consists, consists, consists of uh, part one, part two, and part three. So, that is very important. So, you have to specify according to this code in order to get the right material in place. That is very important to know. Yeah. So go on the next page. I'll show you a little bit what is inside that code. You can see here part three, it tells you about the mechanical properties on structural profiles. There are two grades, two grades, E17 and E23. Fiber line profiles compared to E23. And now it's very important to know all these values are, char are characteristic values. So when you specify, you write E in 13706, part 1, part 2, and part 3, part 3 must be characteristic values. But you can also see that you have different longitudinal strengths as transverse strengths. That's because we get less transverse reinforcement in such a profile as longitudinal. Next stage. In part two, uh, they, tell, they, they will tell you a little bit about the mud position in a section. For instance, uh, all the mud, glass fiber muds, need to, need to follow the outer contour of a profile. And you don't, it's not allowed according to EN 3706 to make a 90 degree angle here. Because then you will get faults in the corner. So you can pull it out very easily in this direction. So when you see a profile like this on site, on the construction site, then it's not EN, then it's not according to EN 13.7.6. So the next page. Um, I would like to tell you a little about, about the fiber line quality assurance system. 
what we have. So we are ISO 9001 certificated and we will have the TS certification uh, until 2017. We are audited uh, twice a year from the German DIBT because we have uh, the German building permit. Uh, we can use uh, fiber reinforcement profiles, structure profiles as steel and wood in the construction industry, but only in Germany. Um, we applied for the CE mark and, and also the ETA approval, which will be a big step in the industry. Um, all our profiles have a production number, so the traceability of our profiles are full from the raw material over the specification. That means we check the dimension, creep, elasticity module every 500 meters. Also, uh, we record the machine settings. And uh, when you see once in your life a profile made from fiber line, you will have a designation on it, uh, where, where it tells you about the license, the profile dimension, the matrix type, and the item numbers, and also the fire code. Yeah, so it's written on the profile. So I clicked on the next page. I can't hear you guys. You're hearing only me. Uh, the tensile strength is the same as high as steel. That is an advantage. But we have a lower E modulus. That means we have to build with the bigger profiles in order to get the same strength within the structure. You can see that here we have a e modulus between 23 and 28,000, depending on the wall thickness of the profiles, lower than aluminium and steel. The, we have very low thermal expansion coefficient, the same as steel and wood. Therefore, you can combine FRP uh, profiles with steel profiles or with the wooden substructure. With very good thermal insulation properties, the same as um, uh, and therefore, we are using the profile in the wind and uh, facade system. Uh, we need less energy to protrude our profiles as aluminium and steel, which makes it a very environmentally friendly product. Because uh, in the beginning, low, uh, higher than normal traditional material as steel and wood. But after the first maintenance or over the whole lifetime, uh, you will save a lot of money. Um, especially for the consultancy, this one is very important that we have a fiberline design menu, which enables you to make calculations. We have calculation examples, design examples. Um, it tells you a little bit about the chemical resistant and um, also, also a little bit about assembly. Uh, please download our fiberline app. You can download it. <laughs> you can download it uh, for free. It's quite nice. Uh, you can see what we have uh, available, but it shows you also the location of the projects we had in the, in the past. Now I would like to tell you a little bit about uh, failure modes. Um, pull out balding, bending, tension, UV light, fire, impact damage, and so on. Uh, there are a few slides, but they are quite interesting. But I don't have the movies, you know, because I'm always getting the question, how, how does a failure look like? So now you can see here, it's a failure intention. So it's a bald, uh, it's a balded failure here in this case. So it's a delamination of the profile. Now you can see a uh, compression failure with the balds. So you can see it's a compression, but it's also a, a delamination of the profile itself. So when you go on the construction site, you have to check the bridge. When you see something like that, then something is not not okay. This is a tension failure. You can see it's a delamination of the profile in the lower short, but it need to bend as much like this before it breaks, and then it breaks immediately. You know. It doesn't strengthen it again as steel. So therefore, you have also higher safety factors within the structure. This is the delamination of, uh, uh, of the structure profile intention. 
So there are four, diff uh, four similar profiles, and the failure mode looks like this. It's a delamination of the profile as well. Um, now you keep, now you will see a, yeah, a flexure uh, bending of the HD plank, which is made for pedestrian bridges. You have a patch load, 100 by 100, and, and the wave load. Uh, the distance between the girders are 1 meter and 50 centimeters, and the failure mode looks like this. This is a wave load. No failure, and the patch load, you will get the crack in longitudinal direction because you have less transverse reinforcement. Yeah? Uh, and just to give you a figure of what the plank can take, this plank breaks when it bends 9 centimeters and then 4.5 tons. You know? So that's quite high load. And um, this plank, I will tell you a little bit uh, in detail. Later on, it's a bridge deck for pedestrian bridges, 500 kilonewton per square meter, and the patch load, 100 by 100. Now you see a failure in, uh, in shear next to the supports. So when you lay our bridge decks on the support, you will have, um, yeah, what can happen is a failure in shear. So this is a failure mode in shear on the legs of the HD plank. Just to give you an imagination, how the failure look like. I think that's very important. I'm I'm getting a lot of questions regarding this topic. Now you can see um, a UV exposure profile uh, under 2,000 hours uh, UV light. It's yellow. It's turned to be yellow. But remember, I told you about the surface wear. It's just the surface wheel which turns to which turns to yellow, and therefore we are all always recommend to paint our profiles. It's just 60 microns, so this is the first layer, 30 microns, and the top layer with the paint with the color, 30 microns as well. Just to give you, uh, yeah, uh, a nice look on the bridge. You can see. It turns yellow only on the outer layer of the profile. It doesn't go deep into that profile. So I click the next page. So, but this is very extreme here. Yeah, this is uh, not normal. <laughs> so, so. Now, you can see a delamination of the bridge deck. Uh, this is a fatigue test on the big profile, FPD 600 we call it. In the past, it called acid profile. There are single profiles bonded together with each other with a bonded, with a bonding line. And this fatigue test has, uh, has been tested fatigue of 10 million cycles and 14 ton patch load. And at the end, it's a full scale test. At the end, they pulled um, pull through, and then you can see the first is what happening. The, the uh, steel beam sparkles, and after that we get a delamination in the profile. So this is the worst case scenario what you can get uh, when you pull it through. You can see it here. It's a, delima it's a delamination of the flange of the top flange. This is an FRP walkway in the Netherlands. It's next to the sea. So they have very nice beaches over there. Uh, we had a nice drink when we had a look at the bridge. It was uh, quite beautiful. And uh, this structure is made from full composite, full composite deck, but stainless steel bolts, uh, AFIA quality. And what you can see here, now I can't show you the movie, but actually a uh, lorry crashed against this walkway. And I wanted to show you what's happening with this structure and th at this point where the lorry hits uh, the beam. And in the next picture, it's a nice movie. It looks fantastic. 
Uh, but now you can see here, at this, uh, yeah, it crashed again here. So what you can see, the, uh, the failure doesn't spread over the whole beam. It's just locally. Yeah. What you can do now is you can grind the surface. Yeah. And then you want a flat, uh, a flat profile on top around here and, and here. This is what you can do to strengthening that beam again, or you just uh, uh, make it new. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, the weak thing on this walkway is the stainless steel board because it corrodes. So therefore, now you know why we're using uh, FOP also in the offshore industry because stainless steel is a weak material there, especially when you have seawater. In, in the in the UK, it's a big issue over there, yeah. especially in the railway industry. And therefore, I would like to show you a lot of rail uh, structures from the UK, but also Denmark and Germany. I clicked already on the next page. You know, <laughs> um, fire. I am getting a lot of question about fire. What happening? But now I would like to explain you more in detail. Um, fiber. Uh, so, all our structure profiles and bridge deck consists out of 68% uh, fibers and 32% and polyester. The fibers melt at 1,400 degrees and polyester incinerates at 140 degrees. That means tension is okay, compression is not okay. So, what we can do is we can passive fire protect our profiles. You can do that with a paint, which you normally use in the steel industry to make them more fire resistant. But what you can also do is using um, some bit of rock wall. Yeah. On the next page, yes, it's so slowly. But this is my fault because um, it's still updating. I'm sorry. And I can't stop it, and I don't know why. Uh, and now you can see how we passive fire protect them with rock wall. We put them into the fire cabin here. They burned it, and then it looked like this. Yeah, it is burned. But uh, it is very important that you have a look at the at the fire movie. Um, where, where we burned different kind of polyesters, um, but I but I don't can't, but I can't show you it. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, polyester burns well, and it spread normally the flame. But what we can do and what we really do is we are putting a fire additive inside the profile, which develops a bit smoke, but it's not as much as you think. The advantage of uh, this fire additive is that it burns locally. It doesn't spread the flame. That is very important to know. What you can also use is a different polyester. It's called phenolic polyester. The disadvantage is it's quite expensive and not as as um, as uh, high strength as isopolyester. polyester. Um, according to um, the Euro code. Uh, for a laminate thickness between 5 and 10 millimeters, we reach Euro class D. And if we have a uh, wall thickness greater than 10 and above, we reach Euro class C. This is what we can do with our profiles. And in the bridge industry, uh, we had never problems with fires because it's, um, it's not uh, a building structure. It's not an. Um, a house, for instance. So that is a fire test, which is quite interesting. Everybody who wants to see how it burns, and um, yeah, maybe next time, you know, when I can screen the presentation from my desktop, that will be would be perfect. And uh, this is also a movie where you have uh, this is an I beam bonded and a new profile bonded underneath and on top, and then they pull it through. With pressure, and then you can see how the profile react, and you will see that uh, a bonded connection will never fail in the bond. It will always fail in the laminate, and therefore you can predict and calculate 
bonded connections. We often are using uh, a two component epoxy uh, from the company called Zika, but there are so many different kind of polyesters or uh, epoxies available on the market because of the wind turbine industry, automotive industry, so there are a lot of applications. I clicked already on the next page. So now I would like to talk about FOP structures. Very old ones because uh, um, it shows you that it works. <laughs> um, it, it has been built in uh, 97. The bridge is 40 meter long, 3.2 meters in width. Everything is made from composite, without, but not the bolts. It's stainless steel bolts. Also the pylon is made from FOP and the cables are square tube profiles. And the whole bridge weights 12 ton only. If you have a wooden structure with with 40 meter span, it would weight uh, more than double, more than 30 tons. But this structure weights only 12 tons. This uh, bridge is actually over the uh, electrified railway line and also next to the water, which you can't see because this picture is uh, there. Yeah. So, why you should use FOP within bridges. And I had a presentation two weeks ago where I talked to a network rail. I gave the same presentation I did today uh, with the movies. And um, it's because the possession time, one hour possession time, which means you have to stop the train, you have to lift the bridges in, one, one hour cost about 400,000 pounds. And they don't care what uh, how expensive the bridge is, but it needs to be maintenance free and fast in and fast out. That is very important. So FRP has a very low weight and high strength. You can build it off site or in a factory. You have a very long lifetime because it's durable uh, towards weathering and corrosive environments. You have uh, minimal maintenance and. Um, it is a, a very environmentally friendly product, which I have shown you before. You have also good electrical insulation. Um, after 15 years of service, they removed three load-carrying uh, profiles and tested it again. The same profiles was what they have been tested on the beginning. And uh, but I explain you next slide. Let's make a, a cost analysis first. Um, they compared the FOP structure with the steel and the concrete structure. What you can see at the end of the day that the FOP structure is in first place a little bit more expensive than the steel and concrete one. But with the first maintenance and so on, you will have the money in the pocket. And um, the overall cost in '97 it was uh, 316,000 pound. Yeah. Coming back to this, uh, three load carrying members, <laughs> what they have been tested, and after 15 years they found uh, that no mechanical properties went down since then, uh, without maintenance, without doing anything. And this is a very very good, uh, 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 not solution, yeah, result, result. So now I show you pictures how the bridge performs today. Um, in uh, 97, the bridge has been painted blue and white. You see that on the cables. Of course, it looked now a little bit faint. Um, also, uh, yeah, the bridge looks uh, yeah very dirty. They just cleaned the surface of the deck uh, twice a year even less. On the one side you can see it's a little bit green, but the bridge performs very well. So this is a cable state bridge, which you can span more than 40 meters. You can see the pylon here. It's very impressive. So what you have to do in order to see the bridge, you have to come to Fiberline because it's next to the uh, factory. This is a bridge in Spain. It's a it is 38 meters long, 3 meters in width. It has a uh, double uh, piers. You can see here it's inclined 5%. Um, this bridge weights for, uh, 19 tons only and um, the height is 6.2 meters. It has been built next to the 
uh, right there next to the railway station and railway line. It is actually the high speed line between Barcelona and Madrid. Um, and uh, they, of course, they did a test next to it. But the main advantage is that they, they could lift the whole bridge into place with having only three cranes. So that is quite impressive. And this is what, uh, what the railway industry is looking for. Fast installation, less maintenance. And even within time, they can just remove the bridge and once and uh, repaint the bridge next to the track, track line. And the arcs are made from uh, U-profiles, which you can see, this is one U-profile and another U-profile and bonded with a flat sheet on top to make it to make them to make them bigger sections. Because I told you the E modular is only a maximum of twenty eight thousand. Steel is two hundred ten thousand, which is very, very uh, impressive. And the connections between those arcs, because you have always trade members, because we cannot protrude curve profiles, those uh, stainless steel connectors where you can assemble the profiles with each other. The advantage of using brackets is that you can uh, just uh, release one member and change the member, which you can't do with full composite structures without having any bolts and brackets. So now you can see this is a floor beam and the floor bracket. Now you can see three cranes lift the whole bridge and without stopping the line, of course, during this duration, um, um, yes, they stopped the line, but uh, it was being built, I think, uh, just in three hours, it was being erected, installed. So the next uh, picture, so this was in 2001, so it's already uh, 14, 15 years ago. And we need to have more structures as this, especially fronts. So actually in 2005, they won this uh, footbridge award. And the overall cost uh, was 220,000 pound, which is 1,800 pound per square meter. Just the FOP structure was 1,500 pound per square meter. So this is for a 38 meter bridge, quite attractive. The next full composite bridge, it's a B bridge. Um, it spans 22 meters, three sections. The longest section is nine meters. It's a two U profiles, a U360 on both sides, uh, uh, FOP Henry on top, and the FOP decking on top. The whole bridge weights 3.5 uh, tons only. So, come on, next page. So the cost analysis, and this is an analysis uh, from today. So if you want to buy a bridge like this, um, it costs about 1,600 pound per square meter, which is about 2,000 euros a square meter. A normal uh, steel bridge costs about 1,007, 1,800 uh, euros per, per square meter. So we are still a little bit more expensive, but as, as, as more as we have uh, uh, more sales, the prices goes also down in the future. So you can see it's a lightweight structure with the two uh, four tiny columns. Of course, uh, we would have some more bracings in, but this is in Denmark, so that's all right. This is a, a nice, uh, uh, two, there are two structures here. It's a, it's a truss bridge. So the maximum span of a truss bridge, five kilonewton per square meter is about 12, 13 meters. Just remember, truss bridges up to 13 meters or 12 meters. And the few the bridge is in, and I have a very nice movie in the next page, which I can't show you, but it's so interesting. Yeah, maybe next time. Um, yeah, the next page, I can't go on the next one. 
here we go. This is a movie. Beautiful. But the next page. Ah, they flew the bridges in. This is in the Scottish Reservoir. Uh, and they had no chance to get the bridges into place. So one uh, one structure. Uh, does it work? No. No. no uh, they couldn't get it into place because uh, it was in in the very desert. So they flew the bridges in. In the same time, 2013, they erected a FP bridge eight meters long in Edinburgh. So this is uh, these are the three. Uh, Ah, yeah, structures uh, built in 2013. Um, full FRP trust bridge, eight meters long. I would like to show you some more pictures now here from uh, from FRP bridges. And you can see you see a lot of bolts because uh, the pin bolt capacity is not very good. Um, and therefore, and this will be the future to bond profiles together because you can get more stiffer connections and you get will get a longer span and you don't have uh, vibrations problems because it's a uh, stiffer structure now this is a bridge in uh, the netherlands uh, they are quite keen in using FRP since uh, 15 years and uh, there are more than 5,000 uh, structures made from composites or using at least uh, a composite deck. Now you can see it's a 23 meters plan. There are two strategic profiles bonded on top of each other and bedded through. But I show you in the next picture. So you, you can see it's a longitudinal beam and curved. How did they do that? Uh, because I told you in the beginning, we can only make straight profiles, not bended profiles. Uh, what they did is that they took two scratch profiles, put a bond in between a two component epoxy. You can see that here. They bond it with each other, put some weight in the middle, and then they bend the profiles, wait until the uh, epoxy has been cured. And then they release it, and then you have a banded beam. And this bridge actually three main beams, and then the FPD 300 deck, which is closed top and bottom, 80 millimeter high. I'll show you later. Bridge. This is a bridge in Denmark using a timber substructure, timber handrail system, and the deck made from FRP. So, sorry, you have to use also FRP. Where it makes really sense, you know. I tell you later a little bit more about it. Now I talk about bridge decks. What we have is a pedestrian bridge deck, a bridge deck uh, up, up to 12 tons, FBD 300, close, top and bottom, and then we have an FBD 600 profile. Now this is a PDF, and now it comes up FBD 300. 450 and FBD 600 to heavy road bridges, but not at this PDF one here. So pedestrian bridges, it takes five kilonewton and the surface load of 10 kilonewton, which is a surface car, um, like 3.5 tons to clean the bridge deck. And this FRP bridge deck can be used for new structures, but also for maintenance schemes. Yeah, it weighs 70 kilograms per square meter only. It's always 500 wide, so we cannot make them 20 or uh, 200 or 300 wide. It's always 500 in width. And the height is 40 millimeters. We have an empty plank as well, but for pedestrian bridges, we always use the HD plank. And this bridge deck has been on more bridges, uh, on more than 300 bridges in Europe, 3,000 bridges in Europe. So that is quite impressive. And now I would like to show you some bridge tr structures, uh, some interesting ones. Not all 3,000, but uh, four also. Um, of course, we have some accessories. We have an edge profile, an F profile, some longitudinal connectors, 
Sometimes you place the plank not transversely on the bridge, but also longitudinal. Then you need those longitudinal connectors. And uh, you have to uh, fix the plank with each other using those bolts. But also you can use clamps, adjustable clamps or non-adjustable clamps. But what you can also do is you can bond them together. Yeah, that's also possible. So now some um, uh, maintenance schemes. So you can see it's a wooden decking on top. It's been replaced by an FRP decking. It is in Cardiff. It's a Windsor Road footbridge over a big river. And uh, the bridge deck, um, the wooden bridge deck is also very slippery. And when I went on site to make some pictures, there, were, well, there was one guy uh, go directly on the bridge with the bicycle and he just slipped away and directly on the power pad. So it was incredible, you know, <laughs> just uh, seeing that guy uh, falling over. It was, uh, yeah, you can see that guy. It was, uh, yeah. And this uh, consultancy who made, uh, who was the consultancy, it was the Capital Simons. And uh, he said also, Christopher Lewis said it was very slippery before and dangerous, and now we have removed this hazard. And it looks good. It's also very important. <clears throat> Just for information, we have this deck also translucent. It's, uh, it's a bit green, but you can put light underneath and the light will go through the decking. So that, that looks very beautiful. And we have, we have done some, some, yeah, project in the past, in the past, but especially for Spain, these guys, yeah, they love of this translucent plank. Again, a maintenance schemes, a wooden digging on top, it's a steel bridge, wood digging, longitudinal timber beams, and on top this uh, timber decking. Uh, this bridge was built in 98. So you have seen the uh, bridge before from Fiberline. Um, this one have to be fully maintained in 2009. Just after 10 years, you have to remove the decking. And uh, it's a lot of work. It costs a lot of money for the municipalities. And they really look for, for maintenance-free solutions. So And uh, FRP is uh, it's the best what you can use in this case. Um, the longitudinal beams have been replaced by FRP beams. Please use, doesn't matter if uh, steel sub structure or FRP structure and neoprene strip between the beams and the decking so that the uh, bolt set which you, where you fix the plank down will not get loose within time. So be very careful. I have seen a lot of bolts in the water and just going, uh, yeah, but now we are using those Nordlock uh, washers. They are quite nice. Uh, it consists out of two pieces and uh, they don't, um, they lock with, e with each other. They you can't remove it. So, because you have also guys running around and steel, stainless steel stuff. Yeah. And on the bridges and so on. So this Nordlock was washer is perfectly. So you cannot steal it anymore and it will not get loose within time. So this is a finished uh, result. They have uh, chosen a color as a non-slip surface. You can choose any royal color you want. Yellow, green, purple, whatever you want. Uh, I had one city, they had uh, a horrible blue, uh, not blue, it was uh, yellow. It was off. But they liked it. So uh, in 2008, this is again a, a, a railway track line. Uh, they refurbished this bridge, all the steel members, and also the wooden deck. They replaced the wooden deck uh, with this HD plank. It's 20 meter long, 1.78 meters in width. It's in Trocrea. It is yeah, northeast England. Yeah. 
So I pressed always the little slide in advance and it doesn't, yeah, here we go. Now you can see here uh, the rotted, uh, yeah, the corrosion on the uh, steel members and the re they replaced the wooden decking with the FRP decking. So please talk to me when you have projects also in the future just talk to me i can give you a lot of information how to connect the planks to the substructure um we can give you load tables we can give you dvg files we can give you everything yeah material based this is a, a quite an interesting structure uh, it has been built last year. Last year, it's, uh, it's also a network rail in the UK. It's called Thornaby Station Footbridge, and there was. Um, it's a new build structure. It's 42 meters long, 2.5 meters in width. Um, it was uh, an old structure before. It looks quite similar because uh, in England they have this uh, heritage thing. But they have to rebuild everything. It need to look be uh, it, it need to look like uh, the one before. You can see that here it was a steel sub, sub, uh, a, a steel structure, and the bearings were um, cracked. So what they have to find, they need to find a solution with a lightweight structure on top. So what they have used is a steel frame, and then have a P deck on top to make uh, the bridge lighter. In this case, they saved, they saved more than 300,000 pounds make in uh, reusing the bearings by using a lightweight steel FRP structure. And this is what I mean. You have to use also uh, FRP where it makes really sense, you know? Uh, it makes also sense to build uh, full FRP structures, you know? But in this case, they decided to go for a steel FRP deck. And you sometimes you cannot uh, rebuild everything using FRP. So this is not the this is sometimes not good. So as an engineer, you have to uh, use the right material in the right places. As you can see here, you have the, the steel beams and the FRP deck on top, and then you can use any uh, surfacing you want. They are using mostly epoxy with a uh, sand on top. This is a, a lifting of the bridge, and actually they won uh, this British uh, minor award in 2014. Uh, that was quite interesting for these guys, for Balfour Beat. You can get always in, uh, in contact with these guys to get more information out of it. Yeah. So you can see it's a winner, found a footbridge, minor project category. It's ICE Roberts and Stephen Award, they call it. Does your professor said uh, the presentation will be finished in an hour? Yeah, just 15 minutes left. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the next bridge check weights uh, 52 kilogram per square meter, 80 millimeter in height, 333 millimeters in width. It's a closed top and bottom. It can take up to 12 tons. Sometimes you have bridges, you have a steel substructure, and a timber dang on top, and glass going over it, especially in the, in the mountains. You have a lot of those bridges. And with this time, the wooden decking corrodes, and um, they have to replace it with the timber because it's a lightweight, lightweight material. So, you can use an FRP deck because it's also very lightweight, but now you have a durable deck on top where you don't need to do anything in the future. You know? I pressed already the next page. It takes a very long time. You know. So this is a maintenance scheme for network wear. They, uh, there was a timber digging on top, and it's an electrification line. So they have to build the power part as high as this, and it needs to be solid. Uh, it looks awful. You know, see the guys living around, seeing at those uh, fully parapets. Okay, they are a nicer structure than this, but the point is that you don't have any maintenance in the future. So what they do, what they did, they rebuilt the parapet 
and uh, put the fence there so you can uh, see through. Actually, you can put uh, direct asphalt on top. It's no problem. Uh, putting uh, 140 degrees on top, nothing happens with the material because it is an enduroplast. Now I'm talking about big bridges. Just a few pages, but this is the most uh, exciting uh, uh, um, uh, profile what we have at our factory. It's a 100 kilogram per, per square meter. It can take uh, loads up to 60 ton, and it has been developed according to the Eurocode one. It has cost more than 4.5 million to develop this. Uh, bridge deck together. It has been funded by the EU government for future infrastructure in 2000 and one. It has been released and took uh, more than 10 years of uh, development work. Um, first bridge here. It's a 40 meter span, full composite without the parapet. It's stainless steel, but it's five meters in width and can take 45 tons. It has been built with a double deck. Yeah, to get such a big span. Yeah. And, um, so the maximum length full composite bridges, it's maximum 40 meters. 40 meters is maximum. Uh, if you go to a, a longer span, you have to work with the steel substructure, but I show you in the next picture. So you can see here the bridge has been assembled and this is a, a big advantage, they can pre-assemble the full bridge uh, somewhere else on the factory, put it on the, on the, on, on the, lorry, on the lorry, get the bridges and put them in place. Get them on site and put them in place, install it in place. So, and then they can save a lot of money. So... As I said, you can sometimes you can work with the steel substructure and then FRP deck on top. Ah, it was too fast. However, the full bridge is uh, two parts, 25 meters long, five meters in width. Um, the bridge has been erected next to the motorway, so you can see you have uh, less traffic interruptions. Yeah. Um, Instead of using concrete deck, you can use an FRP deck. You, you will get also a much lighter bridge. So they pre-assembled everything in the tank because you have a lot of bonding work to do, which you can do when it's raining. Uh, the temperature while bonding can be between 3 degrees up to 35 degrees. As hotter as it is, yeah, as, as warmer it is, as, um, yeah, um, how do you call it, as different, as, uh, yeah, as faster cures cured the cured, cured the uh, epoxy. So the motorway has been closed mid midnight and lifted in one place. So the next day you will go through, you will see a fully bridge installed. It is a perfect. Uh, it's a nice bridge. And the next page page I would like to show you a price comparison. You can see uh, the additional cost. Of using the traditional material was about 500 pounds a square meter, but then you save a lot of ma uh, of, of money by the cranes, the lift, and the building site instead of using uh, concrete, 350 pounds per square meter, and then the traffic delay. The government. The government is calculating how much people per hour are in the traffic jam. This costs the government so and so much money. So at the end, they save money and they not have taken the maintenance issue into, into consideration. So that is a, that is just perfect. Normally, it's, you will sell it like butter, you know, but it's not like that. The budget price was 1,200 pound per square meter and it's not so expensive, I would say. Um, go to the, so we have eight pages left, no, six pages left. I already clicked, uh, click again. Come on. Here we go. And uh, the last project I would like to show you because it's uh, the most beautiful bridge, I would say. Uh, it was a concrete bridge before. Uh, built in the 70s, now they have to fully replace it. Then they have chosen a composite bridge. Uh, why did they do this? Um, next to the 
Yeah, there was a school next to next to this main road. It's a main road, um, and the, the whole bridge need to be uh, uh, refurbished or replaced within uh, two months, summer holiday. So, getting all the concrete away and putting the new bridge into place uh, on the, in I think it was six weeks. So what they did, uh, they uh, delivered the bridge in three parts, fully assembled. And then they did uh, three bond, uh, two bondings on site. Um, it consists out of FPD 600 profile and a strategy below and carbon sheets as well to get more stiffness in longitudinal direction bending, bending limitation. It was uh, L, uh, uh, it was L divided by 400, I think, the bridge. And uh, the bridge is eight meters. And, Eight meter in length, so nine meter in length, and twelve meters in width. Uh, the connection of the parapet, they have to crowd uh, polymer concrete in, so you cannot use normal concrete. So because um, um, uh, the Icali is about uh, uh, value is, is more than ten, con uh, it's a, it's uh, it doesn't go down over fifty. It stays always in, in the same pH value. It's a, yeah, more than ten, and um, um, and isophthalic polyester is not alkali resistant. For the rebounds, where you put them into concrete, we are using a uh, vinyl ester, which is a different polyester, which is actually, of course, uh, alkali resistant. But never embed isophthalic polyester into concrete. Within after ten years, uh, you won't see SOP anymore. Believe me. So go. So that means, uh, yeah, three bonds on site. They put the bridge or they get the bridge um, to the location, and then they lift the bridge in. I have also a very nice movie, but not here in this presentation. And you can see it's just a lift. Um, I can't remember the whole uh, weight. It was uh, I can't remember, but it's very low. It was on the first page. I think it was uh, less than 20 tons, much less, I think. So the whole cost, and that's nice. It uh, it has uh, 1,300 uh, pound per square meter, and the installation cost was actually 60,000 on top. But this was because of the service diver div div uh, diversions. Yeah, it cost a lot, it's more than 75 percent of this 60,000. But the, des the design 15 materials 100 fabrication fabrication 20 delivery on site and category three check. It's uh, 10,000 euros. So this is a custom analysis of the short road bridge, but I don't have the weight in my head anymore. Um, but uh, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, you can send me also an email. Uh, we are very happy to, to consult you. Uh, Please remember, we are only a manufacturer of profiles. We can give you all the information about mechanical properties of the profiles, but we cannot design anything. You know, we can provide you with all the DVG files, information, so that uh, you as a consultancy are enabled to uh, to make a design on, on road bridges, pedestrian bridges, or FRP structures within the industry. Yeah. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, welcome back on YouTube or something next week. <laughs> I have no idea. But uh, I can't, I talk to my to my laptop. Unbelievable. I never did it before. So I'm sorry for the interruption here. It's a very slow internet because yeah, my computer is updating the fiber line at the moment, and I'm sitting here in Germany in my little home office. And I wish you a very nice evening. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Emmanuel, do you hear me?
You are currently the only person in this conference.